Hey, welcome back everyone. It's me, Mr. Forky Upscaler. This video is going to be something that was kind of requested of me, even though some other YouTubers have already done this video. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to give you my two cents on what type of settings do I recommend for you guys to use on your Xbox One X, okay? And what type of settings you should output. We're not talking about calibration, we're just talking about Xbox One X 4K UHD settings. All right, first thing first, you gotta make sure what type of TV do you have, okay? Uh, is it a high-end premium TV, okay? Uh, what's the uh, luminous ratio, peak brightness nits measurement? Is it over 1000 or is it 800? So you have to kind of look at all these things. You gotta look at your uh, bit color, all of these 4K televisions with HDR, they're 10-bit, okay? Even though some of them, they're measured by the color gamut ratio, depending on, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, what's the uh, ratio of your white color gamut. In this case, Samsung KS8000 has a full white color gamut because it has a quantum dot cells built into it that reproduces that richer color, all right? So you kind of have to look at both sides of the aisle. You know, you cannot just buy a Xbox One X and then connect it to a entry-level 4K TV and expect the best possible quality, okay? If you buy a very high-end premium 4K TV like a QLED or C7 series from LG or A1E or even Sony X90E, uh, uh, if you get that, all of these high-end premium 4K TVs will definitely take the advantage of your Xbox One X, all right? And the reason I'm showing Samsung KS8000 because at the moment, this is what I have as a high-end in my home. And as a matter of fact, Samsung KS8000, it's a really good TV, and this is a very hard TV to find. Uh, I don't think they sell them anymore. They switched to MU version, which is a lower nits, and they don't have a uh, full white color gamut as this TV has. Remember, this TV has over 1,000 nits and full white color gamut. My only uh, beef with this TV is the edge lid. That's the only thing that stops this TV from being really a great, great TV. If it had full real local dimming, this would be a great uh, pick, uh, hands down, you know. But anyway, here, let's jump into, the reason I have to tell you this and get it out of the way, so that way you understand that it works both ways, all right? You gotta have a really good TV to take the advantage of your Xbox One X, okay? I think I mentioned this dozens of times. Yes, you can buy Xbox One X and the uh, TCL Roku TV, but don't expect quality to be top-notch, all right? You're not gonna squeeze that best possible picture quality as you will with something, let's say, like KS8000 or uh, 9000 or, uh, Jesus, Z9D, uh, C7, A1E, top of the line TVs, okay? With the top of the line TVs, you're gonna squeeze the best possible picture quality. But this here is just gonna be me letting you know my preference of what I usually use for my Xbox One X, okay? I'm gonna show you my output. And this is what I normally use. You don't have to use this. You can go ahead and try different methods, but this is my method, this is what I'm using. So let's go to the settings right here. Just click on the Xbox button, it'll take you to the settings, you go to the settings. And then on the settings, you go to uh, display and sound right here, hold on. Let me just adjust my low light so you guys, right there. Go to our display and sound right here. And then move to the video output, which is right over here on your right. So remember, you go to the settings and then on the settings menu, you switch down to display sound. And then on display sound, you switch to video output. And on video output, this is where you're gonna output your chroma up sampling and all that stuff. All right, okay, what you're looking at here is obviously TV resolution, it's a 4K UHD. That's what I have it set on, 4K UHD, because it is a 4K TV. 
uh, color depth. This is a very tricky thing because <clears throat> it really depends on a couple of things. It depends on your HDMI and your TV. Uh, one of the things that I really kind of, I'm not a, like a huge fan of, it's the, uh, the Samsung KS8000 uh, HDMI hub. Now, when you have an HDMI hub that's connected to another cable that goes to another cable that goes to a TV, that takes a lot of latency for the HDMI to read that, you know, okay? So let's say you have a very lengthy HDMI cable, right? And it's connected from your Xbox to your uh, separate external HDMI hub from Samsung. All of that stuff will take a lot of bandwidth for the HDMI to read it between your hub and then between your hub to your TV that's connected. I prefer a built-in HDMI tuners inside a TV because that way it goes directly in. That's just my, it's just my opinion, okay? But either way, it, it works, all right? However, I'm using a very high-end cables. I'm using an AudioQuest gold-plated HDMI cables. They're about $60 to $70. Uh, if you go with a 12 feet, it will cost you $100. I got a 6 feet. Uh, shorter is the better, okay? Don't go for the longer length of uh, HDMI unless you are in a home theater studio and you got to do it that way. Me, personally, I use the short length of HDMI cable, okay? Because with a short length of HDMI cable, uh, it's going to be a much quicker and faster uh, readout between your television HDMI and your device, okay? So, what you see here, it's 12-bit, 36-bit per pixel. Now, you can choose a 10-bit or 8-bit. It really won't make much of a difference here because you're not going to see this 12-bit turn into and chroma upsampling to, uh, to 422. You're not going to see that chroma upsampling to 422 because... When it's on a user interface, user interface, it's not a native 4K user interface, okay? It's more like an upscaled 4K, all right? The reason they're doing that, so they can save the memory, so they can do all the background uh, necessary work on the console that needs to be done. They're trying to give some breathing room to the console. So that's why it's not outputting a native 4K on the user interface, okay? So it really won't make much of a difference whether you have it on the 12-bit, 10-bit, or even 8-bit. Okay, because this thing will always be on the 24-bit per pixel on the 8-bit when it's on a user interface. When you switch to a game that supports uh, HDR, it's going to jump into a 12-bit compression. But I leave it on a 12-bit because I like to have that 12-bit compression being outputted with 422 chroma upsampling. So that way, when I'm running an HDR game, I get much better chroma upsampling with 422, and I get much better color compression. So I leave it on the 12-bit. <clears throat> but you guys don't have to, because automatically, it's going to switch to uh, 36 bits per pixel, 12-bit chroma upsampling. But I leave it on the 12-bit anyway. Color space, honestly, here's the deal with this one. Yes, you can use RGB. But here's the problem with the RGB. As I just told you about the RGB. If you have a TV like me that has a separate HDMI hub, that has a separate cable that goes out into my hub, and then from my hub goes into another HDMI cable that goes into my device, that's a lot of bandwidth communication. That's a lot of cables trying to communicate with each other. So if you leave it on the RGB, RGB requires a higher bandwidth on your HDMI. Now, if you got a really good HDMI, like I do from AudioQuest, that's the High Speed 2.0 uh, gold plate, it's like a really good uh, HDMI cable, Then and it's short, six feet, and I kind of wrapped it around in a little circle and made it even shorter, if you have that, then you're gonna you then you can take the advantage of the RGB. But I really don't recommend uh, RGB because RGB uses uh, 444 chroma upsampling, which is the highest 
uh, chroma upsampling compression. So what I would do here, honestly, I would just leave it on the recommended. Because if you leave it on the RGB, like I said, if you got a, a very weak HDMI cable, a very long, weak HDMI cable, then it's gonna go ahead and might not even read your device. You might have a blank screen or the picture might be going in and out. So leave it on the standard, recommend it. And then here on the advanced video settings, I check everything on, okay? And this is mainly what you're gonna be getting on all of your TVs, it's a 422. That's gonna be your compression for the HDR, okay? And here on the, on the 4K details, you can see that this TV pretty much supports all of the above. It supports 10 bit at 24 Hertz, 10 bit at 50 and 10 bit at 60 Hertz. And here you can check to see what else it has, but pretty much this TV supports all of the above. All right. Now, as I mentioned, the 12 bit, uh, 36 bit per 12 bit, once it's switched to uh, HDR, it's gonna compress anyway. So that's why I leave it here on the 36 bit per pixel and 12 bit. Cause uh, your TV is gonna compress that HDR anyway. So this is my display and sound video output for the Xbox One X. And this is what I'm using. Uh, I highly recommend you leave it like this uh, because at the end of the day, it's gonna, Chroma upsample it to 12 bit anyway. Now you're not gonna be getting that true 12 bit. This is what I try to uh, try to explain to people. You're not gonna be getting that true 12 bit because there are no 12 bit uh, panels out there. They're all 10 bit, but they're compressed to 10 uh, to, from 12 bit to 10 bit. Meaning you're gonna get a little bit better colors. That's about it. Okay. So this is how I use my Xbox One X settings and uh you guys don't have to do it this way you can keep it on your 8 bit or 10 bit doesn't really matter because hdr is gonna up compress that to 12 bit compression to a 10 bit anyway but this is what i'm using pretty much and this is what i recommend that you guys use also really you have to double check your hdmi before i end this video i'm gonna say this if you're using a receiver Make sure that your receiver is uh, HTCP pass-through on all of your HDMI inputs. And also make sure that you're using a very high-end HDMI cable. That's very important. Okay? And other than that, that's pretty much all I have for you guys. Thank you for uh, watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. All right? If you have any questions, leave it down below in the comments. And I'll try to answer all your questions as quick as possible. Other than that, enjoy your holidays. Happy Tuesday.